wonderful person, this is Anton, and well, have you ever wondered what actually are the asteroids that are possibly going to collide with our planet Earth one day and maybe cause some devastation and hazard? And are you tired of hearing about these apocalyptic events that never actually occur? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss this in a little bit more detail, and I'm going to give you some tools uh, directly from NASA that will show you and teach you about the uh, actual dangerous and hazardous asteroids in our solar system that might one day collide with planet Earth. But for now, though, you have nothing to worry about. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. All right, so devastation on the planet Earth is extreme. Like, I didn't actually expect that it would be completely destroyed from the few asteroids that I launched at it. So I'm gonna have to start a new simulation here because that's not exactly what I was planning. But uh, what we are doing in this video is we're actually talking about the asteroids that are out there known as the near Earth asteroids. I'm gonna see if I can find them here. There is a simulation known as the potentially hazardous asteroids that kind of shows you some of the ones we've discovered and some of the ones that actually do approach Earth, which is right there. There's Earth. And these are the asteroids that may potentially collide with our planet or have caused some kind of a alarm going off on uh, our planet Earth previously. One of the famous ones are um, Apophis, for example, which is somewhere in this mess of asteroids. But you may want to know what is actually uh, is the most dangerous asteroid right now. And there is a way to find out because we have a system currently in place developed by NASA that continuously measures the positions and uh, relative positions of various asteroids in compared to our planet Earth. And then uses a very sort of a interesting algorithm using uh, neural networks and self-learning AIs to try to estimate the hazards of a collision with a certain asteroid and it's actually actively updated pretty much every second so in other words you can actually go there and it's totally free to go there and you can discover which asteroid has the highest chance of colliding with our planet earth when and possibly even how much damage it's going to cause if it does collide with a planet earth so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this website first and I'm going to show you how it works and we're going to talk about some of the concepts that are involved uh, in on that website and we're also going to possibly collide some of those asteroids with our planet Earth. So the actual website is known as the Sentry and it's a website developed by uh, JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory and also the Center for Near Earth Object Studies and basically it has a lot of a lot of impact risk data as it's known. Essentially what it has is a collection of tons and tons of asteroids measured pretty much every second and uh, uses a lot of complex algorithms to find out if the chance for collision is high or low. It uses several scales. Uh, the most famous scales for determining the collision chance are the Torino scale and the Palermo scale. Um, and these are, there's, uh, this is something I will discuss in future videos, but basically what you may want to know is that uh, this scale only takes into the account um, impacts within the next 100 years. So basically if it's less than 100 years, then it will appear here. If it's more than 100 years, it will not appear here. And if you actually click on the scale, you'll notice that there's nothing. There's not a single asteroid right now that we've discovered that has a chance of colliding with our planet Earth in the next 100 years. And then there's a Palermo scale. Um, okay, when, when I say chance, I mean like for sure, it's gonna collide for sure. And then there's a Palermo scale and Palermo scale is a kind of a logarithmic scale that basically has these numbers um, def that define the hazard, potential hazard from an asteroid. So normally between minus two and zero is when you really should kind of be start monitoring things carefully. And here, I don't think we even go that low. And this is from the last 180 days. If you look at everything from um, the entire time, you'll notice that then it kind of becomes a little bit more involved. But here there was only four asteroids that ever came to the point where we started observing them. And then everything above zero becomes a hazard. Uh, for the Torino scale, there's still nothing. And uh, the cool thing about this website is that you can basically kind of define your search parameters. Like, for example, I want to have something that's has a slightly higher chance of collision. Now, the highest chance of collision, there's still nothing. You know, there's, and this is um, 
basically 1% collision. E minus 2 means that it's uh, 10 multiplied by a power of minus uh, 10 to the power of minus 2. So it's basically 0 0.001, which is 1%. And uh, in this case, so uh, nothing has a 1% chance of hitting Earth. And that's uh, by itself already is a pretty low chance. Nothing has a... Ev uh, oh, no, never mind. There's one asteroid that has a slight chance um, of colliding with Earth in the next... 200 years and we're going to take a look at this asteroid because this is the one that does have the highest potential chance and then there's a bunch that have um, something like a one ten thousandths of a chance of colliding with earth and in terms of polarimus scale you can also define this as well so you can see uh, the potential damage that they might cause and so on and so forth uh, so this is a pretty awesome website and it definitely kind of helps you understand the science between the collisions but also uh, allows you to kind of discredit those naysayers about the end of the world coming from asteroid collisions because you can go to this website and be like okay well they mentioned this asteroid I'm gonna go look it up and I want to see if it's on the list and if it's not on the list you have nothing to worry about anyway so we're going to go to the most likely uh, asteroids to collide with our planet and what we're going to do is we're going to take a slightly closer look at the three of them. So there's actually three asteroids. One of them is called 1950DA. This means that it was discovered in 1950s. Uh, this one was discovered in 2009 and this one was discovered in 1999. Um, Binu is actually something of a famous asteroid because it did appear in several NASA reports. And uh, these two are not as famous, but this one here has currently the highest chance for a collision. And you can click on this go in here and find out about its mass, its total energy, and uh, its velocity, uh, po potential velocity of impact, which is 19.4 kilometers per second, and it's dangerous in terms of polarimus scale, impact probability, which currently stands at uh, basically a tenth, or I guess maybe two tenths of a percent. So the potential hazard is still very low and this is in the year 2185 specifically right here March 29th now um, the distance it might pass by is this this far basically half a radii of earth which is actually pretty close so let's let's go and put this asteroid to um, basically the location where it's going to pass just to see what it's going to look like so half a radius of earth is about 3000 kilometers away from earth and uh, this asteroid is available to us in universe sandbox it's actually right here so we can go ahead and first let's place it in orbit around our planet just to kind of compare to some of the other objects we have and so here we're going to place it right around here so this is the distance at which it's actually going to pass in the year 2185 all right so this is the asteroid now it might appear kind of large but let's just let's go and compare it to some of the objects you might be more familiar with i'm going to go into the human-based objects and let's actually compare it to the great pyramid of giza in egypt so we're gonna place it right next to it and as you can see it's actually kind of not that big in comparison okay it is pretty big but not as huge as you'd imagine it because its uh, radius is only about 300 or less than 200 meters actually it's under 200 meters um, here's the cassini spacecraft we can actually even place it in orbit around this asteroid and have it orbit around if we can kind of there we go so there's the cassini spacecraft that uh, was orbiting saturn earlier and uh, you can kind of see that yeah, it's it's large, but not tremendously large. So even if this asteroid collides with our planet, um, or I guess you might say when this asteroid collides with our planet, it's not going to cause uh, too much of a destruction. And we're going to we're going to find out how much by colliding it at the end of the video. But for now, let's actually go to another wiki and use the value right here, which is about 160 meters of diameter. This is according to NASA. And then basically take a look at this table right here under impact events to try to estimate how big of an explosion and how big of a crater it's going to create. So our impactor is around here, maybe a little bit less than that. This is how much energy is going to be created on the atmospheric entry. This is the impact energy. And this is in uh, basically uh, megatons and 
if you don't know anything about this value, uh, just to give you a comparison, one of the, uh, or I guess not one of the, but the largest atomic bomb ever exploded was the Tsar Bomba, and it was actually about 50 megatons. So this is about five times as, more, as, as powerful as the largest um, atomic bomb ever. So it created a crater of about three kilometers, and uh, these types of events usually happen about 36,000 um, once every 36,000 years. So if this impact occurs, this is what is going to basically create. Now this might destroy a city if it hits the city, but to hit a city, it uh, has a much lower chance because cities only cover about 3% of the um, entire surface of the earth. And that also means that uh, the chance su suddenly decreases quite dramatically. It's very likely that it's going to hit water which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to go into a new simulation. And in this case, I actually chose the climate simulation. And we're going to uh, launch this asteroid at, uh, let's say, this area right here, the Pacific Ocean. Or maybe no, let's launch it into the Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to observe the collision happen in a uh, slightly accelerated time, but also because this is Universe Sandbox, it doesn't always actually calculate collisions, so it might be a little bit extreme, but I still want to see it. I'm sure we all want to see it. And so here's the asteroid approaching our planet Earth really fast and colliding pretty much straight out, straight onto the surface of the planet. And there is that huge collision. This will generate quite a lot of explosions and tsunamis. The actual uh, shockwave is probably not going to be that large, but the game does generate it uh, slightly larger than it should be. And now if I accelerate time, we can kind of see what happens to our planet and what happens to the climate on our planet, because this is a climate simulation after all. All right, yeah, these explosions are a little bit more dramatic than they should be. So this is the collision um, that's most likely to occur in the year 2185. Wow. Okay, a little bit over-dramatized. This is like Hollywood of collisions. Too dramatic. Too much. Too much explosioning. Should not be that much. But it looks beautiful. And uh, now we're going to actually take a look at two other asteroids that appear on that list. And uh, the other two asteroids, we're going to come back to this in a second just to check the temperature. The other two asteroids are Binu uh, at the size of about 490 meters and 1950 DA at the size of about 1.3 kilometers in diameter. This one is probably the most sort of dangerous. Um, if you were to go back to that table, an asteroid that's one kilometer or more in size would generate uh, such a tremendous explosion that it would create a crater that's about 13.6 kilometers. They only happen like every 500,000 years and the actual impact is thousands of time, times uh, more powerful than even the most powerful atomic bomb. So uh, that would be this asteroid. Now let's actually check which of these has a chance of colliding with our planet Earth uh, and when this would happen. So for you can kind of see the range here. For uh, this 1958, the biggest asteroid, we think it, if it happens, it's going to happen almost uh, um, a thousand years from now, 2880. So nothing to worry about until then. And for Binu, it might actually happen. Let's look at the highest chance. It might happen either right here in 2180 or right here in 2175. So also about like 150 years from now. So once again, nothing to worry about. So hopefully by now you're feeling more comfortable about this whole prediction of end of the world with asteroids, not gonna happen. But let's go back here and let's launch these asteroids at our beautiful planet and discover what they do to our planet. So both of them are actually flying toward a planet right now because I launched them separately from this, but I just wanted to give you a comparison of these two uh, in terms of size. So there's Bino and 1958, although I think maybe, just maybe, this is not actually very realistic because their size is not as big. Let's correct this mistake because both of them are 13.4 kilometers here. I think the game just kind of auto-generates them. We're going to change their size to their actual size. And so here they are, here's Bino, here is uh, 1950 DA, and here is the Pyramid of Giza 
from Egypt. So there's a pyramid compared to all of them. You can kind of see much, much larger than the previous asteroid we collided. So if we were to put the pyramid here, you would see that these are much more dramatically larger. All right, so these are actually in orbit, so we don't have to worry about them, but I put two more on the collision course. There is the first one, there is the second one, and we're going to watch our planet and its temperature, the climate simulation here, as they both collide with a beautiful blue ball called Earth. And here we go. Three, two, one. One event. So, as you can see, the collisions don't really look that different from the first asteroid. Mostly, once again, because Universe Sandbox is still trying to learn how to simulate collisions very well, but these two would be a lot more dramatic. They would definitely generate a lot more um, impact event uh, disasters like earthquakes, possibly even volcanic eruptions. Uh, and if they hit the water, very likely tsunamis. But in terms of Earth actually dying out and causing uh, an extinction event, very, very, very unlikely. The temperature here is still the same. Nothing much changed on the planet Earth except for possibly some destruction to some infrastructure or if it hits near cities, people will die, but not as... Oh, never mind. Where's all my greens? My greens disappeared. But then, anyway, that's probably just a bug in the game. Um, so yeah, don't expect any of these asteroids to cause a massive extinction event. They're just not big enough. And we don't have big enough asteroids on the list to cause any of these extinction events. And you can check it out by yourself by going to Sentry, uh, the link for which I posted in the description below. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching, hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.